on uh, this coming spring break. So my name is Dean Murakami, just to uh, give you a little bit of idea. My name is Roxanne Morgan. Um, Dean and I went to Cuba last spring break along with Kate. Haha. -ha. Um, and we are definitely, uh, we're going back again this spring break. So just a little heads up and we'd love you all to come along with us. So what I thought I would do is the first thing would be to show you a very quick video, it won't take very long at all, of a little bit of our trip and those of us that, that went on this one. And then we can then talk about what it's like to go and uh, the things that you have to do. And if you um, have any questions, we'll answer any of the questions. Uh, and if you have an interest in going, please let us know because uh, we'd love to recruit people to go. So. I don't know where my audio is on this on this thing. Uh, this is our group right in here. Uh, this is the all the uh, all the culprits, and uh, n a number of them are here from Los Rios. And we had one faculty member from Sac City College, and that oh that was our tour guide, the best tour guide around, right? Our tour was fantastic. And so here we're walking around the main plaza, and. Um, this is the founding tree that's dead. That's a dead tree. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then the castle right there by it. Um, the, it's, you know, Cuba is just an absolutely beautiful place to go and see. Um, the, the sites uh, all concentrated around old Havana that we went to it was just spectacular and beautiful. Um, I thought uh, the people are friendly, uh, people are very nice to us, very easy to get around. Um, so uh, it's uh, just a lot of fun just to be there. Like any country, I mean, this is, uh, again, um, this is a, a third world country. It's like uh, you know when I travel to Honduras or uh, any other place in uh, uh, down there. Um, it's uh, not going to be the the best accommodations in the world, the most up to date standards, but they do pretty well there uh, relative to the economy around Honduras and other areas. The economy is actually not that bad. We didn't see uh, you know horrible horrible conditions that you that people think about. Uh, it was actually um, actually pretty. Uh, it was actually pretty good. So I'll just talk a little bit. Um, I really wanted to go to Cuba last year. As I said, I wanted to get there before Starbucks did. And it's great because still there is no Starbucks. Um, but there is a lot of privatization going on right now, especially with Italy and Spain. They are buying up properties and investing money into developing them. We saw a lot of uh, private hotels and private um, restaurants, actually. The government's actually started to allow individuals to own. Um, so most restaurants are government owned, but we actually ate a lot of privately owned. So the individual is actually now allowed to create their own um, establishment, create their small industry. So there's a lot of that going on. Uh, oh my God, yeah. Anything private was much better than the government. Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, talking a little bit about the, the structure of the trip, um, first off, uh, I had a great fear of going, thinking it was going to be impossible to get in and impossible to get around, and that was absolutely completely unfounded. Uh, you get to the Miami airport, and you get a little sticker, and you put in your passport, and you go to Havana. Um, once we were there, 
Um, every morning we had about a half day bus tour to different sites. We, um, <laughs> our taxi, they are everywhere, they're gorgeous. Um, and we had Arturo who was our guide. So every morning we had a wonderful tour of the city um, and a lot of their industries. So because they have, they're a communist socialist government, they had, um, every day we would go and look at a different local clinic within a neighborhood. And we would go in and be introduced to the people and to the facilities. And then um, the second, uh, second, we kind of moved our way up. Oh, this was an orphanage. It was phenomenal. Uh, they, incredible facilities and taking care of the children. They had on-site, um, God, I looked miserable there. Um, on site, I mean, they had, I mean, the beds, they had cooks, they had psychologists, they had therapists, they had social workers, and they even, this one had uh, the security guards um, for the establishment. Uh, this was meeting with the, the, vice, uh, the vice presidents of all the trade unions, or the trade, they don't have unions, I'm sorry, the trade delegations in the, the country. That is the now defunct American embassy where the noise, remember that, that uh, Trump pulled all the people out of the embassy because of apparently the sonar noise? So anyhow, we spent every day in the morning, we have a half day tour um, going, we actually went to a, um, an eye bank where they did eye transplants, which is the most sophisticated medical facility I've ever seen. And on the fourth day, we went to a bioengineering uh, facility where they manufacture all their own drugs. They've c c created their own cancer drugs, their own Alzheimer's drugs. Because they can't get them from Western countries, um, they have to rely um, mainly on Russia and China at this point. They've created their own uh, drugs. Uh, you see, we saw a lot of um, doctors. Turns out Cuba is the, lar uh, the most highly educated, one of the most highly educated countries in the world, and they, have, they export the most doctors than any other country. So if you go to any country and there's doctors, they are typically of Cuban education. I saw more doctors here. We actually kept wanting to, oh, yeah, that was the biotechnological firm. Um, on, a, on a social note, every afternoon or evening, we would have free and we would walk around Little Havana, um, I'm sorry, Old Havana, um, a ridiculous amount of fantastic music just coming out of everywhere. And the most amazing food, as long as you didn't go to the government restaurants. Okay, they were, <coughs> but um, we uh, actually, we got lost, or kind of lost, sort of lost one night. We, found, we ended up in an amazing restaurant right on the ocean. And we had the most amazing meal, and the band started playing um, Hotel California, uh, Cuban style, which we thought was awesome. Um, the architecture, as you can see, it's absolutely gorgeous, but it's absolutely fascinating, because if you know the history of Cuba in 1959, when Fidel Castro took over, um, it was an extremely wealthy, gorgeous, beautiful country city, Havana. So you will see these beautiful Spanish mansions. You're, you're trying to figure out if you're in New Orleans or if you're in Madrid or Barcelona, okay? But then what happened was the infrastructure has uh, deteriorated. So you have these gorgeous, beautiful avenues, these amazing mansions. Um, and then, but if you look a little closely, you can see that they're falling apart, they're falling down. And then all up at the, Mal what's the Malacon, the Malacon? The Malacon, um, they've just been ripped to shreds by the pounding sea. And yet, you have the most vibrant art and music I've ever seen in my life. And that's what Castro has actually poured a lot of his money into, is the, the art and music scenes. So they've turned so many of the deteriorating buildings into beautiful art pieces. It's a craziest combination. Uh, Matanzas, which is about a two-hour uh, bus ride away, but uh, from Havana. But uh, this is where 
the slave trade started for, uh, 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 for Cuba uh, to supply workers for the, the sugar plantations primarily. And uh, this is where African American culture started, and this is where it emanated from throughout Cuba. So this, I mean, you know, Afri African American influence in the Cuban culture is completely integrated into the whole system. And uh, so, um, but it all started right there at, uh, in Matanzas where the, the slaves came in. So there's a number of, of um, if you go downtown in certain areas, there's a number of different wonderful museums to go and see. I didn't get to see all of them, but I did see a number of them, and it was really fantastic. And this is our, here we are at our last dinner at the, in, um, in Havana, and uh, it was just a lovely setting and place. It's one of the m more beautiful mansions in, uh, in Havana, in reality. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt. So um, just to just give you an idea of the thing, kinds, of, kinds of things that we saw, um, if you came on the tour, Arturo, and we're trying, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're getting Arturo again, and at least that's what they told me, and um, he's a fantastic tour guide, so much history, so much information about culture, anything you asked him, he had just a ton of information about, uh, uh, whether, it's, uh, uh, whether it's about the culture, whether it's about the political history or whatever, uh, he would integrate all that into uh, a narrative that was very, very educational, something that was just so fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, but um, uh, a lot of people, like um, uh, uh, Roxanne said, have a lot of concerns about getting in and out of Cuba. Um, don't be concerned. We got in really easy. You got in really easy, right? I told people, it's really easy. And then people concerned, oh, they're going to really check you over when you come on out and go through customs in in uh, Miami or wherever you're coming in from. And you find out, they don't care. They just let you right on through. It really is very, very easy. They don't care. They didn't check me on how many cigars I was bringing, how much booze I was bringing. They just said, just go on through. So really, they don't care. They really don't care. And so one of the things that we would like to do is get more people to come to Cuba to understand and see the people because really, uh, uh, a lot of people look at the politics, but don't really see the people and the people and their lives there. And that's, that's truly what we got to see. That's truly what I was interested in, getting people to understand and know uh, how uh, vibrant and uh, the, the people are there. There's no doubt that it's, uh, it's a poor country. There's no, no two ways about that. But they put their money in, in terms of free health care, free education. Those sorts of things are there. Um, as far as uh, 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 food and everything else, uh, we didn't see a lot of starvation kinds of issues, did we? No. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. The, you know, I've been there twice and never saw that kind of issue uh, and, uh, there. So um, I think that it's a, just a very interesting way to take a look and uh, have your eyes open and then say, hey, you know, uh, we really need to, I think it's a country worthwhile for us to open up trade. Op I mean, I, you know, I, I went there because I, I wanted to go before S Starbucks, before McDonald's, before Pizza Hut, before all those things uh, came on over. And uh, it's a joy not seeing any of that there. <laughs> and they don't have internet. So cool. Um, at in certain spots, you can buy a card, and it's basically like a parking lot, like the one in front of a hotel, and you could buy a card for like five kooks, which was about five dollars. Um, and then you would go stand in this parking lot, and you would get internet, and there'd just be hundreds of the Cubans on there, like oh, you know, FaceTiming, and I'm, you know, this. But it was amazing because when we would travel, rather than all of us sitting there doing this or looking up, the fact that there was no internet was just so refreshing. And every night at the Malacón, which is the kind of the waterfront, people are just out walking and talking. And if you're a little jaded as I am with all the internet these days, I mean, people are just like, hey, yeah, how are you? Yeah, and they would want to talk to you. Oh, friendliest, absolutely friendliest, extremely safe. Um, 
I was going to say, uh, like I said, the food, the entertainment. Um, we went to, what was the oil factory you went to? The fabric oh, side? Fabrica. Oh, Fabrica, they are. Oh, my God. They have the most amazing clubs and um, entertainment areas to uh, go hang out in. Um, it was just overall, and, and uh, kind of going back to what Dean was saying about flights, there's hundreds of flights go in every day. So, I mean, I was one of those people completely terrified about going, thinking, it's going to be in my passport. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of flights going every day from Texas and from Miami. So, it's nothing. It was nothing once we got there, and it was nothing coming back. Yes? Oh, sure. Hit play. I'm sure we can figure that out. And when are you guys going next? That's my question. April 4th through the 11th. Of course, we'll do that. Yeah, you do. You mean a passport passport? Oh, yes. Did you want to talk? Oh, no. So, um, so we're going to go during spring break. Um, it's, uh, um, it, you know, like I said, uh, we're trying to get people and get a group going. We like to get anywhere between, you know, anywhere between 15 and 20 people, if possible, uh, or more. Yeah, that's fine too. Yeah, no, we, we no, do have so. We have, we have more people. Yeah. Here, let me. Yeah. So, if you don't have an actual passport, you can expedite it. There is a way. You can do it within a week. You have to pay like I think like 50 bu 50 bucks, Mark. 55 or 80, you can get one expedited. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, 11, 11? 12? A year from now? I'll be living in Florence, Italy. No. <laughs> Mic drop. I'm teaching in Florence next year, but probably. Yeah, thank you. But anyhow, I want to get back to the passport. And just a, a kind of a quick thing. So um, spring break starts on a Saturday, I believe the 4th. So what we do, if you, if by the time you fly from here, you leave Sacramento, typically they're like, I, you're flying United, I'm flying American. Um, so my flight goes from here to Sacramento to um, Dallas, and then Dallas to Miami. And then the next morning, because uh, you get there pretty like seven or eight at night, next morning you fly Miami to Havana, and you're flying from Houston to Miami, yeah. to Houston to, Havana directly to Havana so yeah. all in, all in one shot all in one day so um, that will make it pretty pretty easy uh, so leaving from Sacramento you can get to Houston then Houston to uh, Havana and then and then the program goes so we all kind of gather on Saturday in Havana because people come in at different times and then we end up all gathering at the same hotel um, and we had a welcome dinner and then we started right off the bat on Sunday morning so Every, so Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we had a, a bus picks us up, Arturo, our guide who speaks flawless English, and he used to be a university professor, but sadly makes more money doing this. Um, so uh, every morning a bus comes, super air conditioned, thank God. Um, and we take a great tour of the city, and then usually late in the afternoon, we go off on our own and do what we want. And then um, on Wednesday, we had a free day to do whatever you want. And actually, Kate and her fiance and I went off to the beaches because they are phenomenal. And you can easily take a taxi up to the beach where we had a white tablecloth dinner, right, lunch right on the beach. And then Thursday and Friday, we had more tours. And then we had a farewell dinner Friday night. And then Saturday morning, we all go to the airport. And then coming back, so actually, you know, of course, with a time change, coming back kind of easier. So that just to give you the schedule. So you get back Saturday night, then you have Sunday to acclimatize, and Monday we start school again. You had your question? Um, right now. Right now it's about uh, $1,905. So $1,905 for the tour. Uh, airfare is separate, okay? Uh, That's hotel. The hotel and the tour. Yeah, one or two meals. Well, you always get breakfast at the hotel, and then most, uh, just about all lunches. And so, uh, and then two dinners overall on two nights. So, uh, 
a lot of times, uh, you know, you don't need a lot of dinner because they really fill you up during lunch. I mean, the lunches were very, very nice. And they take you some some really nice ones. I mean, the the one with the with the um, with the uh, the garden and um, oh. and l overlooking the ocean up there, the one that one that was spectacularly beautiful. So there's some beautiful places that they take you uh, for for lunch for the meal. So very worthwhile. And I'd like to add that you can always find Dean every evening. He is on the uh, garden patio rooftop of the Hemingway Hotel. That is his absolute favorite place in the world. And actually, one day we wandered in. We're like, oh, yep, there's Dean sitting right there. Um, so, of course, many authors and, and writers and, and artists have been to Cuba. And the, the Hemingway, I'm an English teacher, so, of course, the Hemingway Hotel was phenomenal. Um, so, yes, we had huge lunches. Um, but then in the evening, just it's extremely safe. We walked around. There was never any problem. Um, you and I walked home one day from uh, all the way back along the Malecon, and th all the art was up. Um, and, and I also want to talk about the, the, there's two types of currency in Cuba. One is the, the peso for the locals, and then there's the, what they call the convertible peso, which is C-U-C, the kuk. And Cuba is inexpensive, okay? It's not super crazy cheap. But it's not, nothing that makes your head spin. I mean, dinners were roughly the same as here. Uh, we did get told once, we, we found a really good restaurant one night, and we were raving about it the next day, and our, our guide, Arturo, was like, how much did you pay? And we are like, oh, it was only $30. And he was like, oh, yeah, you got the tourist menu, right? And he goes, I would have only paid 10 And I'm like, whoa. Because to us, we had a phenomenal meal, and thirty dollars was really good. <laughs> so, in terms of money, once you get there, the few things that you pay outside of the nineteen hundred dollars, you know, it's it's not uncomfortable. It's not like you're going to Japan or anything. Yes. Yes. So the question was. Um, <coughs> Once you get there, everything is taken care of. Yes, no matter when you arrive on in Havana, there'll be a bus to pick you up and then take you to the, the, the hotel that we're all staying. Every morning there was transportation. You never had a, if anything, by the free day, you were like, I just need some space because everything is taken care of for you, for sure. The only thing you need to do is get to Havana. So it's about, mine's about, about two thousand for what for the plane? Oh, no, no, well, there's others. Uh, okay, so um, so my flight. If you went uh, if you went uh, coach, it'd be about seven fifty eight hundred dollars yeah. round trip. Uh, I'm not. I I'm <laughs> I'm old, so I'm going business class. Uh, round trip business class. That's fourteen hundred dollars. Give you an idea. Uh, just to let you know, again, the Malacone is the main highway. It's, it's just this beautiful, wide, wide street. It's just absolutely spectacular. Um, during, um, during International Labor Day, uh, there's a big march for, uh, for labor during that time. Uh, there's over a million people participating in the march down the Malacone, just to give you an idea. Uh, a lot of times, I would go ahead and catch a cab on the Malacone. So uh, I, uh, I caught one guy once. Uh, he had this beautifully restored uh, Ford Victoria. Even before the Crown Victoria, this was like about 1954 car. Beautifully restored. And uh, got in, going along the highway, the Melicone Highway. He had the top down. He was playing the radio really loud. He would hit the horn and it would play this crazy thing and all that. And then he really ramped it up. And uh, they were, it was playing Hotel California. And I'm going, this, the beautiful sunshine, uh, the top down, driving along the Malacone, Hotel California with the Eagles on. I said, life does not get any better than this. This is fantastic. And uh, so it's, it's those kinds of experiences that are just amazing and once in a lifetime, truly. Uh, going up, like she said, up to the Hemingway Hotel. That's one of my secret spots. A lot of people don't know that, right? 
And, uh, but uh, you can go up there and you have a beautiful, you're up on the sixth floor of the hotel on the balcony and you have, it's a bar up there. You get a drink, relax, and you have a beautiful, magnificent view over, over the city. So it's just a, real, just a really great place to be. It can be really hot down, down the street, but if you go up there, a breeze a lot of times is coming through. So it's a little bit nicer and cooler up there. So it's one of those things that I've, I've found. There's a couple of other hotels that are really nice too. Yes. Oh, so she asked if there's any non-smoking places. I didn't actually see a lot of smoking, cigarettes and cigars. It was kind of, uh, oh, well, the, the, everyone says like the true Cuban cigar is exported. Like they even said to us, don't think, you know, we're like, oh, we're gonna find a cigar store. And they're like, yeah, the best ones are exported. The ones you can actually buy there are not the ones. They said, cause I, you know, was like, ooh, I'll bring you back a Cuban cigar. And my, my guy friends are like, don't. The best ones are exported. But I didn't really, I can't even think of smoking. It wasn't like, <coughs> no, there's no smoking. Um, and, and another cultural thing that we saw at the hotel, we, there was, um, a, what was that, a ballerina? The dance, all the dance kids? And they had come up from all of the islands. Cuba was having like a national, well, their international competition. Um, and, and Remember that, so Americans are the only ones who have, quote, difficulty getting into America, I mean, get into Cuba. France, Italy, Europe, everyone else can just go right in. So, you know, it's not this, this closed society. I was shocked when we were there. I'm like, wow, there's just people, tourists everywhere. Absolutely. So it's only Americans, you know, we kind of have to quietly get in there. But it's wide open to the rest of the world and very much loved by the rest of the world and by Americans. I'm, by him especially. Oh, <clears throat> one thing about cigars, I mean, if you go to the cigar store, I mean, I mean, people bought them and I've bought them there before. But it's, I'm just telling you, it's pretty expensive, right? If you look at the prices, not cheap, not cheap. But um, on this trip, uh, we're gonna be going to a tobacco farm. And the tobacco farmer there and his family, they roll the cigars there for you. And so the money that you buy for their cigars goes directly to the family rather than into the government. So that is, to me, I'd rather spend my money giving the money to the family of the tobacco farmer rather than into the government's hands. So that's what I did. And so I got about 20 cigars or something like that. No, 10 cigars there. And uh, um, my friends who are cigar aficionados, they said they were really, really good. So something to, uh, again, to think about. Uh, this trip uh, to Vanales National Park is, is really a very beautiful. I was there on my first trip to, uh, to Cuba. And uh, uh, so we went there and it's a very beautiful park and a couple of nice stops along the way. Uh, the one thing that is kind of sad, although they take pride in it, is that an entire mountainside they totally destroyed and put up a big mural there. And <coughs> not, very, not very good. <coughs> but, uh, but the park itself is beautiful. Oh, I was just going to follow up. We went to all, they're extremely proud. We went to the Fidel Castro Museum, the uh, La Revolucion. Mm -hmm. Um, we saw they actually have a police guard on the boat that Fidel Castro and um, che, Guevara. che Guevara came over on Mexico with, from Mexico on to start the revolution. And they, it, so you can go to that museum and it's amazing to actually see the boat and they're very, very proud of this. And uh, Che Guevara is everywhere. Um, and it's, it's, it, it's fa and the revolution museum was absolutely fascinating. Just very uh, amazing. And I was gonna say, you reminded me that, you know, on our day off, there was so much to do that we actually had a hard time deciding what to do because Tamika and her mom, they went a couple hours away to a, a fast, uh, a, what was that? 
Uh, it was some park that had some amazing, like the, the probably the I think it was the world's greatest beaches and also oh, yeah. wildlife that had never been there. And um, so you know, we chose the beach just because we were <laughs> tired. <laughs> um, but anyhow, does anyone have any questions? Yes. No, so she asked um, one about the Hershey plantation. We actually drove past it. Hershey did set up a chocolate plantation. And that's actually why the, they have such a, they brought in so many slaves from, was it Nigeria, Rhodesia? Yeah. Rhodesia was their major uh, bringing in the slaves um, because they could work in the extreme temperatures. And so Hershey's plantations there were uh, all um, done with the slaves. No, we did not stop. Uh, sugar uh, plantations, uh, primarily, is what they made a lot of their money on. The Hershey, pl I, I don't think Hershey's still no, no, no. He was, chocolate, he was no. Yeah, he was gone, yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Mark just asked, uh, one of the pictures, he saw some very modern looking family, uh, sorry, modern looking buildings. It, it's just crazy because um, they've l finally allowed privatization um, into the country of the in individuals and other countries. And actually this is why Trump is doubling down or our government is doubling down on Cuba because, because of the privatization, people, Families who now live in America, Cubans, right? They're seeing their own property being used for gain. And they want that money. I don't think I explained that too well. But anyhow, um, yes, there's some extremely gorgeous, new, very modern buildings going up. Um, that neighborhood that was a west of Havana that we went to on like on the second to last day after the I-Bank, just some incredibly beautiful, brand new, sparkling buildings. But those are all private investors coming in from Italy, especially, and Spain. And Russia, yes, most definitely. Yeah, if you talk about the, uh, the institute that develops all the drugs, those are all very modern buildings. Uh, you know, it's really pretty remarkable. Not a problem. So, um, but. Uh, so there's a very modern sections of, of, uh, of Cuba, uh, but then Old Havana is where we spent a lot of our, our time uh, down, down there, just because that's where the history is. And, uh, and, and then you get to learn a little bit about um, how during the, the revolution and, and the overthrow of Batiste, and what the people who were the followers of uh, Batiste left Cuba, and, and he took millions and millions of dollars with them out of the out of the treasury and left cuba basically destitute and then they took it out and he went eventually went to spain but a lot of the people who left cuba uh who were followers of batiste oh uh, went to miami and that's where the cubans of of my uh, of miami and the of florida really are uh, located so they have a long history of anti-cubans and anti-Castro sediment, because they were they were their they and their family history are the descendants of the people who were basically overthrown and left uh, left Cuba. So that's a it's a, a very unfortunate uh, part of our history. This is where a lot of the political strong political influence of you know of, of the Cubans from uh, from Florida are because they come back they they were the elites of of. of of uh, Cuba at that time, and that they still follow that history. Uh, I just think that uh, overall, you, you, you know, with Arturo and the others, uh, you really get to get a sense of the uh, of the of the culture of the people and a lot about their history. You know, if you talk to the people about their political history and things like that, at least the people that we got to talk to, they're very proud of it. Actually, very very proud of that of that history very proud of where they're going, where they are. They would just like to make it better by having a better relationship with, uh, with the United States. That's what they would like to do. So, um, but 
I think that overall, you'd be just very surprised at how open and how, how, um, how, how much Cubans are willing to interact with you. I think you'd be surprised by the overall level of education uh, is there. I mean, people, even though there might be people extremely poor, doing very menial tasks as their livelihood, whatever, if you spend some time talking to them, uh, they're really uh, 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 pretty good. They're really uh, pretty sophisticated. And uh, I remember uh, when we were in the hotel, of course, uh, Trump did something. He, like, embargoed some, I can't remember what it was. He, the cruise ships. The cruise ships. Oh, yeah, that's right. When we were there. Yeah. So I, I wake up, I'm going down to have breakfast, and the bellhop there, the guy there, he goes, did you see what, what Trump did? He starts talking about me, talking to me about all, all this stuff, and the, the, uh, I go, wow, you know, <laughs> they really, he really keeps up to date on what's going on here. So they're, you know, they're really uh, pretty well educated overall. So uh, in terms of health care, let me just say something about health care. Um, there's a physician for every thousand residents in a specific area that they're assigned to. So they make house calls all the time. If a person has a, a child, uh, they're required to go and see that child every day for the first, what, I don't know, six months of their life. <laughs> this is why uh, there's very little, uh, you know, th there's very little uh, child death. Uh, infant mortality is very, very low there because they keep an eye on them from the get-go. So uh, that's what's really good. And, then, and so they will treat them for various things, whether it's cuts, bruises, scrapes, whatever, broken legs, whatever, they can go ahead and take care of that. But if it's beyond them, then they send them to the clinic, which is the next stage, and then they will go there. And then if it's a really specialized thing, they say, no, we can't, then they take you to the institute to, to help you out there. So we got to see all levels of, uh, of the healthcare system uh, there. That was really, just very, very interesting. And then we got to see all levels of uh, the, um, of, of the uh, education system as well while we were there. We got to see all the way down from the orphanage, unfortunately. That was very moving, actually. Uh, it was very interesting to see. Uh, we did go to uh, an elementary school, community school, but the kids were all out of, uh, out, of, out of school. So what they do is they have activities there. And the kids came over and, uh, 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 we got to meet some of them that were there. They should go, come and go as they want because it's their holiday. But they came and they, they sang to us, right? And they, it was very, very cute. Uh, and, then, um, and then you go on to the other schools as well. Uh, this year we're going to be going to the University of Havana, Havana right there. And so, because uh, that, I mean, it's right there uh, next to our, the hotel that we were in. And so it was a shame that we didn't get a chance to really go see it. So we're actually going to go to the University of Havana this time, and we're going to meet some of the professors there, especially uh, those that teach in literature and art. So we're, we're arranging that right now. Uh, so uh, we're trying to get a, a more of a sense of the culture and everything else, because this tour uh, previously was primarily put together and centered around more about uh, labor and union issues, which is part of my, what I do. Uh, at, with the Sacramento Central Labor Council and all the th other things I do. This one, I try to make it more towards something that of interest for us in the, for uh, those of us in, as college university professors, it might be more interested in education than in eye transplant, uh, corneal transplants, that's what they did, right. So I think you, you saw that as the preliminary itinerary. Yeah. I think it matches much more closely of the interest of what I think uh, college faculty here would be uh, uh, interested in. Um, I was going to add something you said. Um, I was really surprised that, um, sorry, um, I was really surprised that um, we, I mean, we met a lot of people, not, nothing really, no controlled environment or anything like that. We just met a lot of people and just super open, very friendly. No one was saying, oh, I want to get out of here. You know, it was just, everyone's very content. They just wish there was more openness, you know, between America so they could see relatives or get goods or get things that they want. And when we were at the orphanage, I asked, why are these children orphaned if you have a social estate and so everyone gets money and, and do you have a homeless population? And Arturo said, very, very, very little homeless population and it's only by choice. And the only reason these children would be in the orphanage would be because their 
mother or father had uh, were in prison for something. Um, it wasn't for any other real reason. Or dead, yes, had passed away. But the fact that you know we never saw homeless people. I mean, I never saw homeless people. We never, no one ever begged of us. Uh, we did have a couple people want, definitely want to give us a ride every time we came out of a hotel. You know, there was always people like, yeah, I'll take you for a ride. But if you said no, they were like, okay. I mean, um, but I was really struck by that, you know, that the, the government does support everyone, has a place to live and gives them food. Um, and so that was, that was really interesting to me that, you know, we saw that. Um, and yeah, the kids were cute, they all. And, and they all have, so, and actually in our hotel, I was watching Western TV the entire time. Um, I accessed every single channel, watched a lot of, I watched the tennis, because <laughs> I love tennis. But it was kind of strange also, because so they have full access to television and media, and actually the kids at that place, they were all wanted to be Ariana Grande. They were hoping to be that. Um, so it's it's only America where they we you know but they have access to the world um, and strange places for internet. Any questions? As I know, time is running out here. That's a phenomenal question. Um, you may <laughs> you may not use you can't use banks. You can't use credit cards. You have to take American cash with you and change it at the airport or at the hotel. Um, and I found out, so anyhow, I took $1,000 cash with me. And uh, when I got there, I converted half of it. And when that ran out, I converted the other half. And I actually spent to the penny about $1,000. Um, but I'm a little bit more flagrant with money than most people, as in, oh, sure, I'll do this, I'll buy that, whatever, we're in Cuba. Um, so that's me. Um, d what did you and? We just talked about the thing, so the first job said I took about a thousand pieces down, and within a minute, you didn't spend it all. You only spent a little over a thousand, and that was between the two of us. So it wasn't anything where, and we did buy two years of stuff at this point. So it wasn't anything where it was incredible. We could have gotten away with much less than that. We could have spent much less than that. And as for conversion, they do. Yeah, so we were like, I was all like, crap. Actually, I didn't, I only spent, I'm sorry, I only spent $500. I still had 500 American dollars, and I only, I, had, I converted 500 American dollars, but then um, towards the end, I couldn't spend it, so I was giving it to them, and I'm all like, here, buy some, let's buy some rum, whoopee. I will say that you do definitely need to take more cash than you expect, because if something goes wrong, you can't pull out a credit card. And, I, and just a quick anecdote, I was in that internet area, a guy was like checking my email, and I thought, and um, something, had, oh, I know, taxes had just been paid, so my bank account was short, so I got an email saying, your mortgage is coming up, you need to move money. So I'm like, oh yeah, okay. So I, I went, I, it didn't even occur to me, I opened up you know, my bank account, Bank of America, app. As soon as I opened up the Bank of America app, it triggered a, a federal shutdown of all of my bank accounts and my credit cards. And I had to email my banker and say, WTF? And he said, two countries in the world that if you try to access your bank account, it will, uh, Iran and Cuba. So they, because of the federal government. So anyhow, I triggered a national shutdown of all of my bank accounts and, and uh, checking and uh, credit cards. So I was like, okay. Um, can you cover my mortgage? Anyhow, so when I got back, I, it took me about two days to, uh, I had to send the most amazing <coughs> amount of documentation to unfreeze, and all because I tried to open up my app. Um, so don't open up your app when you're in Cuba. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so actually there's actually a, a house bill on, on the docket right now that would open up uh, the use of credit cards and ATM cards in Cuba try and open it up a little bit. So that's actually in the house, on the house uh, 
to being considered right now. And so we're very supportive of that. It helped the economy of, of, of Cuba. Uh, the hotel that we were in, this was the, the this is a form, I think, Hilton Hotel. And so this is one of those, um, this is one of those famous hotels that people would come to, they would have um, this, the, the glitter, the, the glamour, all the, all this sort of stuff, um, that would be there. So it was pretty nice. <coughs> this year, we're going to be just a bit south of, uh, of that. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and then uh, the hotel's right on the beach. So just to give you an idea where we'll be staying this time. So right, it'll be right on the beach, right there, waves coming on up, nice pool. So uh, the ambiance will be different, but we won't be right in the middle of everything like uh, the Hilton was, right? Yeah. Uh, but it's the yeah, yeah. But this is just south. Go if you go down straight down the Malacone, go down a little further south. It, it's right off of there, yeah, right on the beach. This is a, it's a low trip. Yeah. No, uh, uh no, no. So this is open to anybody. You know, if you know of anybody that would like to go, sign up. Family, friends, whoever. You know, I we don't care. We really don't care. So if you know of anybody that might be interested, uh, let them know that this is happening. We have to start to make decisions and have the numbers uh, uh, pretty quickly. But, uh, uh, but. Uh, this is there. If, if, um, if we happen to hit, I think, uh, 20 people, the price of the overall trip will go down for everybody. So that's what we're trying to do, make it as, as cheap as we can. But it's, it's great to go through Los Rios just because uh, we, uh, Altu Vista, Altu Vista, with the travel agency, and so if anything goes wrong in Cuba, they take care of it. Um, you know, it's more of a controlled, you know, environment. So, you know, if you have any, like I was, like I said, I was very nervous about going to Cuba thinking it was going to be all, that was the end of my passport or something. And, you know, we, we went on a completely legal visa, no problems. And just kind of going through Los Rios gives you a little bit of, you know, get, well, it gives you all of the support. It gives you everything. If you have any, if you have any kind of like, ooh, I'm a little hesitant. I mean, I, when we got to Havana and I got to the hotel, I just started laughing my butt off because it was so easy. And, you know, I just looked at you and because I'm like, because <gasps> the two of us have been chewing our nails, going to Cuba, what's going to happen? And then we're standing at the Hilton in, in Havana that first afternoon going, are you serious? What was all that scary things that the, the government makes it sound like it's too scary to go? It's so easy. Easy. Kate, did you have your hand? Or were you just playing with your hair? Okay. We and wanted to dispel those kinds of myths, really, really truly. So yeah. Uh, like, the fact that there's like hundreds of flights going there every day from Miami and Houston is like, oh, all right. I will say one cool thing that when we got there was to find out about how many women were in their office. It was over 50% women. And all the flights when we got there, they had just signed a new law during the Constitution. Yes. Yes, so over 50% of the, of the Congress are women, and then they had just signed into their fourth amendment. Yes, very progressive society, it's incredible. Um, LGBTQ rights, um, uh, everything, it's extremely progressive, it's surprising. All women, yeah. Everyone who represented um, all parts of society, they were all women. And, um, and the doctors, when we went to the eye bank, yeah. all, the, all the, the major top doctors were women. And they, it almost looked a little bit like a Spanish novella because they all came in with like white lab coats, very serious, incredibly, and then they had like really amazing high heels. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, huh, oh, all right brightest people I've ever met. So when we were there at the, at the, um, at the um, Eye Institute over there, uh, we got to see the, the head of the Institute, and he's there uh, talking, and 
And we just uh, mentioned, uh, well, uh, I said, well, you guys just got a new president. Uh, and I just offhand said, America needs a new president. <laughs> and then he said, immediately, he said, no, uh, the whole world needs America to have a new president. <laughs> <laughs> So it's that was really that was really pretty funny. So they're again, you know, they're very well uh, informed, very up to date. Uh, so um, uh, uh, it's uh, it, that's part of the eye-opening thing. If you know, I've, I've been to a number of third world countries in, in Central and South America. This is very different. This is very very different, and you'd be surprised at at uh, I think uh, how well overall people are doing. Uh, <coughs> If you go to Honduras, and you know, so let me give you an idea. In, with the Sacramento Central Labor Council, uh, we have in a small town in Honduras, which is primarily African American in the countryside, we have built a hospital clinic. We've built it ourselves with our own money. And we supply all the, all the medical supplies and all the doctors, it's all free, and they come from Cuba. They, they come from Cuba. And so uh, it's not only uh, 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 medical care, but also dental care. But that's something that here in Sacramento, we started in Honduras. But if you go to Honduras, and, uh, which I've been to, uh, you see a big difference between rich and poor. It's really pretty stark. Uh, that, that's something you just don't see a whole lot of, yeah. right? It's a, it's a much more egalitarian society. I would say it's a much, uh, uh, in terms of, uh, of um, uh, ethnic diversity. Uh, there's every shade of the of whatever. I mean, every, everyone's uh, uh, all different shades. There's no distinction that that is very obvious. There is. There is. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist, but you don't see it to the level that uh, you do here in the United States. It's really pretty pretty cool. Uh, yeah. For I mean, I never could tell the tourists from the, the locals. Um, but I wanted to, kind of going back to the finances, I mean, you're talking about Honduras. I, I spent a lot of time in Japan, and you, there's no ATMs. They don't allow American uh, credit cards or ATMs. They're just kind of, there's like few places in Japan. You have to go to 7-Eleven to, to pull out cash. You can't go to a Japanese bank and use your ATM. And they're just starting to allow American credit cards. And it's, it's a long story. It has to do with the Yakuza and all that. So here's a, one of the most modern countries in the world, and you really have to rely on cash in Japan, and you have to go to 7-Eleven to get your cash. So it's not, you know, so it is difficult to, at first to kind of get your head around, as Kate said, to like go over with a big wad of cash in your, you know, your secret belt underneath your bra uh, or your pants when you get to Cuba, but it's nothing, nothing. So, and you, and like I said, I only spent 500 that week. You guys barely spent, we were, at the airport on the way out buying stuff that just to spend the kooks because you can't convert them back. So um, <clears throat> if anybody is interested uh, of, uh, in the trip, then I do have uh, you know, our itinerary, our, our, our preliminary itinerary. I do have information about the trip as well. Uh, and uh, you can go to the website for Alta Vista and take a look uh, as as well, but uh, you know or they would contact us. Or just contact us. Be no problem at all. Uh, but uh, I do have uh, I do have flyers up here if anybody's interested. And uh, but again, uh, you know, I think the reason why I wanted to bring people to Cuba in the first place is because when I went there first, I did it on our own. Uh, me and my family, we just did it on our own. We were just going so because. Uh, uh, so, um, and we found it so, so easy. I just yeah. found it really, really easy. I mean, you guys had lunch on the beach? Yeah, when I was there, we had lunch on the beach. I had a lobster lunch for like 12 bucks. Yeah. I mean, what, what can be better? I mean, this is amazing. So, oh, and they, they deliver beers. Yeah, huh? As soon as yeah. these guys, we just lay in our, our beach chairs and <laughs> beers appeared and... Um, yeah, it's it's just amazing. So, I wanted to, I wanted people to have that experience that I had, 
because I just thought it was just so amazing, so different than my expectations. I think it was very different than anybody's expectations that went. And, but I want more people to experience, I think, the fantastic culture of what Cuba has to offer. It really, it is really just an amazing thing. And the, the fact that we, as a country or political system, oppress them so much. I mean, that society of which you look around, does Cuba look dangerous to you? Does it look like they're gonna take over America? It's not gonna happen. So why we're doing this, I, don't, I just don't understand. But I want people, more people to get a look at what Cuba is, <clears throat> bust the myths, and, uh, uh, and really enjoy what Cuba has to offer. Because it is really, if you give it a chance, it is so enjoyable and beautiful there. And just lastly, just, just go before, just go, just come with us. I mean, go now, go next year, I mean, whatever. Just go before Starbucks and Subway and, I mean, I mean, I mean Marsha, I know you, and well, all of you, I know you travel around the world a lot and you, you can't escape Subways and, and, you know, Burger Kings and Mickey D's and all those. And it's just wonderful to be there in a very Western feeling country without any of the chains. Yeah. So anyhow. No Thank Bank you. Of Americas, no Wells Fargo, local banks. That's what it is. It's really amazing. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. And uh, contact us if you're interested. And I hope to hang out with you guys in Havana. Yes.